Mr. Speaker. The last piece of advice that Canadians will take is from this leader who talks about interest rate, Mr. Speaker. Today we introduce a bill to tackle cost of living in this country, to tackle issues with respect to housing, Mr. Speaker. Canadians know we have their back. We'll fight for them at every step of the way. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It's away, the mice will play. <laughs> How many others are going to be auditioning for the Prime Minister's job up there? It's okay, they won't be there long regardless. Yeah. Thank you. But in the meantime, we've got a forthcoming crisis this government helped create. Their inflationary deficits mean that, in, that the cost of living is rising faster here than in the United States. Inflation is up 43 percent in two months. And this after the finance minister said it was gone. Why won't they get rid of their inflationary deficits and taxes so Canadians can eat, heat and house themselves? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Services, the Treasury Board. Plan to support Canadians, whether it's 11 million Canadians with the grocery rebate, whether it is 4.2 million Canadians with the workers' benefit, Mr. Speaker, or whether it is 6 million Canadians with indexing old age security, Mr. Speaker. Unlike the Conservatives, our government actually has a plan, and every step of the way, we will focus on Canadians and what they need during this economic time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the opposition. Well, uh, judge, judging by the applause level, it looks like the fellow from Schwinnigan has a bit of a lead in the... In the lead. <laughs> but, and unfortunately, unfortunately, Canada has a lead in higher inflation than the United States of America. Even the Bank of Canada's Governing Council uh, expressed concern that it was uh, uh, giving false hope about interest rates. The, the recent inflation report that came out shows that the bank may again have to raise rates on the, the Canadian people who are the most indebted in all of the G7. Will this government reverse its inflationary deficits before rates rise and bankrupt Canadians? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Position. I hate for making jobs, but when it comes to the economy, it's something different, and Canadians know that, Mr. Speaker. What the Conservatives should look at is what we did today, Mr. Speaker. We talked and we introduced a bill that will make a difference in the lives of Canadians. That's what Canadians expect, Mr. Speaker. They don't expect that we make fun in this chamber. They expect us to work for Canadians. Today, we introduced a bill that will make a difference in the lives of Canadians. And I enjoy members of this house to work with us, make them meaningful measures for Canadians so we can help people at the time of need. The Leader of the Opposition. Well, I do tell the occasional joke, Mr. Speaker, but none of my humor meets with the joke that is this government's economic uh, plan. Yeah. A joke that has given us the worst inflation in 40 years, yeah. doubled the national yeah. debt, doubled the rent, doubled mortgage payments doubled the needed down payment for Canadians to get into a home, made it so that a, a Torontonian has to save 25 years for a down payment where they used to be able to pay off a mortgage in that time. Will they reverse their disastrous inflationary policies so that Canadians can finally eat, heat and house themselves? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Housing. It's fascinating that the Honourable Member, after a summer talking about housing, put forward a plan that tinkers around the edges, which experts have indicated demonstrate a lack of understanding of the urgency or scale of Canada's housing crisis. For example, we have advanced a measure that will get rid of GST on apartment construction. He's now made a commitment to put it back on for middle-class homes. Mr. Speaker, he has made a commitment to cut the program that is now changing the way that cities build homes in London, in Calgary, and will impact many cities across the country. We will advance policies that make a difference, not just hang something in the window and be a pretender like him. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, what my plan on the GST does is make sure we don't give tax breaks for $10 million penthouse apartments, yeah, like that member is pr proposing to do. We want the, the, the builders to, who qualify for it to have e affordable apartment rentals so that Canadians can actually live in them. Yeah, yeah. God forbid. 
The limousine Liberals want all the money to go to the penthouse apartments. As for his program, $4 billion, and a year and a half later, it hasn't built a single solitary house, and it's only promised 2,000 homes, of which you'd need 1,500 of those announcements to get to the number we need. Why won't they get out of the way so we can build? The Honourable Minister of Housing. Well, member is concerned about building affordable homes, he should talk to the people who advocate for the building of affordable homes. They are telling us to advance a full GST measure, not a half measure, because that is what's going to get homes built in this country. He plans to cut the Housing Accelerator Fund, which is changing the way that cities build homes. He is literally cutting money that's going to build homes and planning to tax the people who build them. If he can't see that that don't work, he should go back to his image consultant and tell them that he needs to start wearing glasses again. The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. Mr. Speaker. Order. 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 Now, I want to remind both sides that pushing the envelope is one thing, but going over is another, and I'm hearing it from both sides. So I want everybody to take that into consideration when they're answering or asking the questions. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, yesterday, the Housing Minister admitted that there will be conditions for Quebec when it comes to the transfer of the $900 million, which should be unblocked and given to Quebec for building social housing. But social housing is not under federal jurisdiction. Is Ottawa telling those who are in distress, who can't pay their rent, who might become homeless, who are held hostage to the Liberals' desire to centralize everything through Ottawa? The Honourable Housing Minister. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the question. In fact, just last night, I had a conversation about with my Quebec counterpart. It was a productive and positive conversation. Together, we are working to help those who need more affordable housing. Provinces, uh, with provinces and our partners at different levels of government to establish programs that are going to support vulnerable people, including in Quebec. The member for We are wasting time while people are suffering, Mr. Speaker. There is poverty, housing issues, there is homelessness. We know what the problems are. We are capable of funding social housing. We have the ability to help seniors who are struggling with the rising cost of living. Meanwhile, though, Mr. Speaker, Big Oil posted $200 billion in profits last year, and yet the government has no money for social housing, no money for seniors. Mr. Speaker, are the Liberals as compassionate as the Conservatives? The Honourable Minister of Natural Resources, as I said yesterday, we have eliminated fossil fuel subsidies. We are working with all sectors of the economy, including the oil sector. We are working with all sectors to ensure that our future will be clean and will also create good jobs for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, the housing crisis is the result of Liberal and Conservative cuts to housing co-ops and social housing. Now, we're realizing that the measure to eliminate the GST on housing construction contains no definition of affordable housing. It's ridiculous. It's insulting, even. What planet are the Liberals living on? Housing is a fundamental, basic right. People's lives are at stake here. Can the Liberals put people before profits? Can they build two million social housing and co-op units? The Honourable Minister. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for his question. I would like to remind him that, for the first time, the federal government implemented not only a national housing strategy, but for the first time named a commissioner to advocate for the right to housing, because on this side of the House, we feel that each and every Quebecer has the right to housing, has the right to a place to call home. That's why we have made historic investments to ensure that all Quebecers have this right. So the Liberals finally listened to the NDP and tabled their housing plan to remove the GST from building new homes. But people in London are getting evicted by rich developers. Yeah. Liberals and Conservatives have spent the last 30 years creating this housing crisis and have caused people in my riding, like the tenants of Webster Street, to be pushed out of their building so a corporate landlord can be even greedier. The Liberal plan does nothing to stop profiteering landlords from throwing people onto the street. So please, will this government steal another idea from the NDP <laughs> and announce a housing acquisition fund so co-ops and non-profits can keep people in their homes? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Housing. I thank the Honourable Member for her question, and as I'm sure she knows by now, we had the opportunity to visit her community in the City of London, where I met with non-profit housing providers who are doing extraordinary work on the ground to support people, to prevent them from falling into homelessness. But she may have also seen that we worked closely with the City and Council under Mayor Josh Morgan's leadership to invest $74 million that's going to change the way that the City of London builds homes going forward. In the next few years, it will add thousands of homes to the supply in that city, which will drive down costs, make housing more affordable, and allow people to enjoy life in a complete community in the City of London, and we're proud of that work. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, after doubling the cost of housing in this country, the Prime Minister thought he would appoint someone to fix the mess he made, who was in charge of immigration when they put refugees on the streets and under bridges, when they had international students sold into prostitution and human trafficking, and he says that I need glasses. This is the same minister that lost a million people. He right. literally <laughs> lost track of a million people that came into the country. Can the minister please tell us, glasses, binoculars, or otherwise, how you lose a million people? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Immigration. I just, wanted, I just want to tell the, uh, the uh, member for Spadina, Fort York, to be ready just in case we have to go to the end of the line. The Honourable uh, Minister, please go. Well, Mr. Speaker, I think you see how thin-skinned the Leader of the Opposition can get That's when he right. gets a piece of his own medicine. That's right. Look, international students are a credit to this country, Mr. Speaker. They are the future of this country, and they are an asset that is very lucrative, and we cannot let them, let them down. Clearly, we need to work with provinces to make sure that they have proper housing, and we have to crack down on agents that are giving them false hope across the country, but let's not make this a partisan issue. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the question was how you lose a million people. And then how is it that the Prime Minister scours his entire front bench and hopefully he even gave a little bit of attention to his beleaguered backbench when he was shuffling the cabinet. And the one guy that he could find to fix the doubling of housing costs that he incurred as Prime Minister was the guy who lost a million people. The guy who will go down in history in the Guinness Book, Book of World Record of having lost more people than have ever been lost in the history of the world. How is it possible they couldn't find anyone better than that to put in charge of housing? The Honourable Government House Leader. Oh my goodness, oh. Mr. Speaker, you know, while the Conservatives stay focused on us, we're going to stay focused on Canadians. While the Leader of the Opposition is making personal attacks, we're going to continue to support the personal lives of Canadians, and whether that's helping them through tough times like COVID, whether it's helping them through difficult times right now with inflation, we are going to continue to be there for Canadians and that will remain. I'm having a 